Ladies and gentlemen, this is your SmackDown review on Friday, May 14th, 2021. I am Joseph Conlon here on the Big Fight Field channel tonight. Um, thank you guys for joining me here tonight to talk about SmackDown. We are not going to be here that long tonight. I'm thinking 15 to 20 minutes tops. Um, not the best day today, but... It's it's all good. Tonight, about a half hour before SmackDown went off the air, uh, the entire wrestling community learned about the passing of hardcore legend New Jack, who just had a Dark Side of the Ring documentary on him last year. And that is... That's pretty crazy to think about right there. That is... Crazy. It was rumored that and confirmed by multiple sources that he had a heart attack in North Carolina today and he passed away this afternoon and he died at the age of 58. That's way too young, man. 58 years old. That That's pretty young, so... Uh, the wrestling community is sad by that. I mean, total blind side right there. Thoughts and prayers go out to him, him, his family, and his friends for the devastating passing of New Jack this, uh, this today, Friday, uh, May 14th. I am, I, I'm feeling okay. Uh, my eyes are bothering me, man. I don't know about you guys, but with the spring weather coming out, um, my eyes are bothering me. Other stuff has taken me over this week as well. So, I mean, not the best week, but I am going to be perfectly good um, to go Sunday night for WrestleMania Backlash. Sunday is also my father's birthday. So, I, I'm very excited for Sunday just let Sunday get here already. Got the pay-per-view on Sunday night. Going to be a good one. We had the go-home show tonight for SmackDown before that show. And nothing nothing really um, special happened. I'm just going to run down the show. Tell, tell you guys what happened. Basically, the main, sh main thing that happened on the show was Natty and Tamina. Winning the tag team title. So I guess that just goes to show you how this show was. I'm not saying that SmackDown tonight was terrible. But it, nothing really crazy was happening. So Let's get started, man. Let's get started with SmackDown. If you guys haven't already, be sure to go check out um, the Raw Review. This past Monday and the AEW Dynamite Review from Wednesday. And of course, last night we did WrestleMania Backlash preview and predictions here on the channel. Myself and Win Brantley from the Triple Threat Review. We did a preview and predictions for WrestleMania Backlash. Talked about Cesaro and Reigns, uh, McIntyre, Strowman, Lashley, and all the other matches happening on the show. Uh, a good... Solid 35 minute video for you guys to check out. I would greatly appreciate that if you guys could go check that out. That is, of course, after this brief review. But, um, we're gonna get started here. We had Roman Reigns cutting a, a, a promo to start off the show, and he was basically saying how Cesaro is a good wrestler, he's a great wrestler, uh, one of the best in the world. But he's just a wrestler. And he said, Roman Reigns said, he he's more than just a wrestler. He's the tribal chief, the head of the table, the universal champion. And he's going to put Cesaro in his place that he can't carry the responsibilities. It wouldn't be good for WWE. It wouldn't be good for SmackDown. And Fox wouldn't want Cesaro to be the universal champion. So... That's what he said in his promo. Then it, he was interrupted by I'm tired. I'm plus I'm tired too. I gotta get some sleep. But uh 
Uh, he was interrupted by Jimmy Uso, which then led to a main event match between Cesaro and Jimmy Uso. So that was the main event tonight. Uh, good segment to open up the show. Roman Reigns cutting a promo on Cesaro, then talking about his cousin until he interrupted him. And yeah, that was the segment that opened up SmackDown tonight. And then we had the Women's Tag Team Championships, which was, by the way, the only thing, the only thing that was advertised on tonight's show was this match. Uh, I hate that. I hate when they advertise so little and they don't put it out there for people to know what's happening on the show. Like, if you were reading the preview of SmackDown and you said, you just saw that the only thing previewed was this match, you'd be like, oh, do I really want to tune in to SmackDown tonight? I'm not, tonight, because uh, you're not going to miss much. But, um, we did have new champions, though. We did have new champions in this match. Tamina pinned Nia Jax with a uh, splash from the top rope, uh, Superfly splash, and Tamina pinned her cousin Nia Jax to win the tag team titles. They cut an emotional promo after the after the win, and over dramatically, they got lots of pyro after the match. I, I don't know why. You needed to waste pyro on this situation, but I mean, good for Tamina, I guess, because uh, I have no idea how long she's been in the company before. She she's been in there for a long time, but um, this is, I believe, her first real championship ever in the WWE. Not counting the 24-7 title. So this is her first championship ever, basically, in the WWE. Good for her, I guess. I'm not, I don't really care that much. That just means we're going to see Natty and Tamina twice a week now on Raw and SmackDown. I, I just don't care about the women's tag team. T they're, they're literally worthless. They are absolutely worthless and they have no direction whatsoever they've been worthless since Bailey and Sasha dropped them it's just facts that not the second time but the first time at Wrestlemania 35 they've been worthless ever since then so um Natty and Tamina they're the tag team champions what does this mean Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax I would have Shayna Baszler get away from Nia and Jax and Reginald immediately. She's been stuck in a tag team with Nia Jax. Where she's basically playing second fiddle. And the main part of that tag team was always Nia Jax. And it wasn't Shayna Baszler. So, um, I would split Shayna away from Nia Jax. Destroy Reginald, have her beat Nia Jax, and then push Shayna Baszler like we know she could be pushed just like she was in NXT. But is Vince and Bruce going to do that? I highly doubt that. I highly doubt it, folks. It's very unlikely. Very unlikely. We had a ceremony with Apollo Crews, which basically led to a four-way brawl between him, Big E, Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens. Big E was the last person standing. All the guys got their spots in. They're finishing moves on each other. And it is official that they are going to have a fatal four-way match next week on SmackDown for the Intercontinental Championship. The, uh, they're going to kill it. I think that is going to be a killer match. All I love all four guys. I love Owens. Sami Zayn is great. Apollo is coming in very nicely as this new character. And Big E's awesome. So I think with these four in the same match, I think they're going to kill it. I think they're going to have a 
banger of a match next week on SmackDown, and I definitely can't wait to see what happens. But um, we got that. Rey Mysterio versus Dolph Ziggler. Probably the best match on the show. This match was actually a really good match. These two work. Obviously, they work well together. Ray got the win with the 619 into a splash. Uh, he tried to, uh, Dolph tried to attack Dominic after the match, but they ran away. And that's the final sell before their tag team title match this Sunday. Bianca Belair was in the ring, Bailey was on the Titan Tron, and they were basically selling their match, the, the final sell for their match. And then Bianca, to get under Bailey's skin, they brought up how Bailey was thrown down the ramp at WrestleMania uh, by the Bella Twins, and she was in the main event and winning the SmackDown Women's Champion. That, 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 that was still terrible, man. What a embarrassing moment for Bailey having her thrown down the ramp that segment was so terrible at Wrestlemania I was there and I hated it but she brought that up to get under Bianca's skin and she's like you know what Bianca I always thought you were a make-believe champion you weren't really a real champion and you still aren't and Sunday your first defense is going to be your last defense, and I'm going to get back my SmackDown Women's Championship. So that was their final sell. That was the big push for Bailey against Bianca. I think we all know Bianca's winning the match, but good promo, I guess. We had uh, King Corbin against Shinsuke Nakamura. Corbin defeats Nakamura in nine minutes after the match. Nakamura gives Corbin a Kinsasha and then another Kinsasha and he goes over to the crown, Corbin's crown. He picks it up and he poses with it and doing all of this and stuff and the fingering motions and he puts the crown over his head. So I do have something to say about this. I, I, what I said on Twitter was, you know, this is the best you've got for Nakamura. Him feuding with King Corbin over who the real king is, that is the best you've got for Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, granted, if we are, I, I, it makes me not care one, but. If, we're, if this means we're getting a King of the Ring tournament this summer for superstars on Raw, for superstars on SmackDown, then please sign me up. Please sign me up. I love tournaments. AEW have, has lots of tournaments, which I love. NXT does some tournaments. I really think the main roster needs to do tournaments instead of um, having... The champion pin, uh, having the champion lose ma set match to get a match to have to defend the title on the next week's show or at a pay per view or whatever. It's just so sick and tiring. But if we're getting a King of the Ring again, I personally think you should. There is a lot of wrestlers on the roster. That that aren't really being used great right now. I would take this situation. I would make a 16-man tournament. Eight wrestlers on Raw. Eight wrestlers on SmackDown. And I would have this tournament go on throughout the entire summer. You can have two King of the Ring matches. and uh, something. Like, I, I'm not sure how you would do it, but... You could do something like two King of the Ring matches on on set episodes. You can expand it like after Money in the Bank, start a tournament, have the finals be at SummerSlam. The winner gets a championship match of uh, the winner gets a world championship match of what brand they're on. So say say Shinsuke Nakamura wins King of the Ring. 
and he's on SmackDown, he gets the next shot at the Universal Championship after SummerSlam. It makes the ma- it makes the tournament feel important. And here's the kicker, folks. It makes you want to tune in for something on a weekly basis. Don't you want the reaction for fans to be like, hmm, you know, they're doing the King of the Ring tournament. I might want to tune in to SmackDown, or believe it or not, I might I might want to tune in to Raw to see who is going to advance in the King of the Ring tournament. I think that'd make for good television. I think that would make for solid television in the summer months on Raw and SmackDown. Because you know everybody's going to want to be going to the beach, hanging out, going to the bar. They're going to be like, who wants to watch WWE on a, on a Friday night in the summer? So have engage your fans with engaging television. With stuff like this. That's what I would do. That's honestly what I would do. And then. Cesaro and Jimmy Uso. Was the main event. It ended in a disqualification. After Roman Reigns attacked Cesaro. Uh, Jimmy Uso got pissed off. He's like. I had the match won. He's like. No one cares about this exposition. Exhibition match. Between you and Cesaro. It's about the big money match. It's about me and Cesaro this Sunday. And then Jimmy was like, everything's always about you. It's never about the family. Everything is always about you. Then Roman goes in and help and attacks Cesaro because he attacked Jay. And then Jimmy wouldn't come in and help Roman. And Roman wouldn't help Jay after he took two neutralizers from Cesaro, and Cesaro stood tall for a second week in a row. No chance in hell Cesaro wins the Universal Championship. I'm giving it about a 2% chance he wins the title. And that was SmackDown tonight. Like I said, very quick and brief review before Sunday. I was going to do my reaction to the Dolphins and Cowboys schedules for the 2021 upcoming season, but um, I can't fit that this weekend. Uh, this week, unfortunately, um, I'm going to be down the shore tomorrow, spending some d- the day uh, down at the shore, like I did last week, and which will make for no podcast either. So hopefully, we get back in the swing of things with the podcast next week. Hopefully, we find a uh, time for. My schedule reaction for Dolphins and Cowboys. And just for a little quick reminder. uh, And I haven't reminded yet, my bad. But um, there will be no NXT review next Tuesday with Cameron Johnson, unfortunately. Again, I I apologize. uh, Because I got tickets to a Phillies baseball game Tuesday night. They play the Marlins. So I will be at that. And I will, I will once again find a way to make up no NXT with my NXT co-host, Cameron Johnson. So, um, just want to get that out of the way. Thank you guys for watching the review. If you have not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the WrestleMania Backlash review Sunday night with myself and Cameron Johnson is going to be on the channel to talk about WrestleMania Backlash Sunday night. So be sure to tune into that. Comment down below your thoughts on SmackDown. Hit the like button if you like what you heard from me in the review tonight. Follow me on Twitter at Conlon underscore Joseph. We are approaching uh, 2.3K followers. So if we could get to that by double or nothing, I would appreciate that over on Twitter. And I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys Sunday night after WrestleMania Backlash here on the channel. Have a good night. Stay safe. And as always, stay classy.